In München, 2015, I talked about extended attributes. Um, since then, I've uh, dug deeper, and maybe I have some new information for you guys. Maybe since then, you have more questions for me. So we're going to have a look at extended attributes. So extended attributes revisited. Who was it 2015? Okay. So you're the intelligent guys now, and you can ask the difficult questions if you like. Okay. Basically, everything you wanted to know about extended attributes, this is a follow-up from what I did at Warpstock uh, Munich in 2015. We said in OS2 attributes, we have the standard attribute system, read-only, archive, hidden. Those are the standard attributes. Extended attributes, however, are file system features which enable users to associate computer files with metadata, not interpreted by the file system. Extended attributes. You should realize that extended attributes can be attached to a file or to a directory. In OS2, the number of EAs per file is not limited. However, the total size is 64K. Extra information in the form of EAs is often handy because, for example, the icon for an executable <coughs> is in the EA. Not all executables, of course, have an icon. The long file name. Depending on how you look at a file, either it reads the long file name from the EA or it reads it from the directory. The biggest problem with long names and directory listings is they don't have to be the same. So if you get a listing using the EAs, you can have multiple files with the same name, which of course is impossible. But with the A's, that is. Uh, you also have a, a code page used to encode data. Just depending on what code page you have, it also tells that in the A how I've encoded it. It could have a version number of the file and so on and so forth. There are lots of stuff in there. Um, I talked about programs related to EAs. You have EA Browse. Anyone use EA Browse? Okay. Search Plus? One. Long Name Check? EA Viewer? Oh, you use EAs a lot, guys. Uh, the Long Name Check is a simple program just to check that long names are not duplicated and agree with the uh, standard EA, oh, sorry, the standard directory name. I want to talk to you now about EA Master. This is a program I wrote basically because I was frustrated when trying to get information using some of the other programs. It didn't give me what I wanted. With this program, you can copy, cut, paste, delete, and a lot more. You can rename EAs. You can edit an existing EA. And it does this graphically. It also provides graphical information of complex EAs. You have a standard EA, which is basically of the type, for example, ASCII, and you just have ASCII information. If you have an EA of a multiple type, that says, in this EA, I have these EAs of the type A, B, C, D. You can create an EA. You might or might not want to. For example, if you just want to add some extra information to a file, you can do that via the EA. 
This program can also search EAs to look for specific data, type or contents. It even has an undo function. And it takes care that the file modification date is left alone. The problem when you access an EA and you do anything with it, because you've done something to that file, and the EA is a part of that file, the modification date gets changed. In this program, make sure you do anything, it's the file still has its modification date as it was. Okay, now we're going to try and do a demo. So this is going to be the fun part. I'm going to do this via VirtualBox. The reason I'm doing it via VirtualBox is basically because um, if I try to do it directly under Arca, the HDMI connection to the Beamer is not supported. Come on, start. Or just like me. <laughs> so we're starting up Arca OS. Oh, yeah, of course, check disk. Now we have a little sound. Sorry about it. I'll, try, I'll turn the sound down, otherwise, we're going to be uh, in problems. You'll need a hearing aid. Oh, here is it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, the error message is just because it doesn't connect up to my server at home, my NAS. So we'll get rid of that. Okay. EA Master, I will start it up. You can see that reasonably at the back there. Well, if you can't or you want more information, <laughs> you can go and grab it on the stream. Okay. Um, what ha this is EA Master, and basically what you do is you select a file, and it will then list all the various EAs in that file. You can select optionally to only show EAs that are there. You can even show EAs sorted. Now you might ask, why do I want them sorted and not sorted? Um, when the system reads an EA, it reads it first to last. And it is for you as a user sometimes difficult if you get a list that is not sorted names jumbled with each other and you're trying to find something it's not easy so you can sort them but you may want to know what is the real order because if it is important that an ea be loaded first you want to make sure it is first because the first one is loaded quickest okay now let's have a look here you see the file sandpack and it has two EAs comments and type the comment is non-critical because in extended attributes we have two basically critical and non-critical and it is an ASCII EA and it has a data length of 75 bytes what is in that EA? And here you can read it, ASCII and hex. You can switch that off if you wish. You see it lines as hex. And basically what is there, this is a toolbar, actions, file which defines a number of simple commands. So there's information what the file does, in fact. You can have a look. A type, and all it says is it's an exit type. <coughs> Mainly the type EA will always tell you what type of file it is. Yeah, which you can generally see for yourself, but sometimes it does give you extra information. 
what you do have here is the hex code of this information. You have to be careful with hex code. If it's ASCII, it's left to right. If it is binary, we have the uh, end Indian problem that the most significant byte is shown second. So it switches them around. We have the possibility to show a so-called raw mode, and what you then see is more information about this file, and what you see is FDFF. FDFF is in fact the code to say this EA is a um, ASCII EA. So you get different codes here for the different types of EA. Okay. Um, I said you can do various things. For example, if I click on comments, I can say, well, I want to copy the EA. And I can go to another one, which doesn't have anything. And I say, paste it. And then I have copied from one EA to the other, which is normally quite difficult. Now we can see the undo is present, so I say undo and it's gone back to what it was, and it goes back to where you were. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, suppose you want, if we have a look here, what have we got? Okay, um, yeah, here we have dragon.wave and underneath draw.ex, yeah? Now, as we all know, if you go into a list box and you type D, it goes to it. But what if I do DR? It now goes using the first two characters, or three or four. So it is not limited in the list box for the first character, but you can in fact type more characters after each other to find that particular file. What you also see here, the buttons, directories, I can switch off directories, so you see only the files. Files are shown in blue, by the way. If I do files, you only see directories. So you can have both, or you can limit it to what you will. It can help you find things. <coughs> Um, let's talk me at the top here you see I have C and H as drives available the colors indicate the type of drive it is if it is a network drive if it's a hard disk or a, a floppy disk in this case and of course all this every system will tell you you've got an A drive even if it doesn't physically exist uh, so I could switch immediately to another drive. If I've done anything, it will save the, dr the list of files I was working on. And if you want, it will always go back to the one you were working on. You can select that as an option. Let's have a look. Okay. Here, I've selected this particular directory and this particular file. This file is interesting because it has an ASCII EA, the checksum, and it has an associate table. Now, the ASOC table is always a multi-value, multi-type. What you see, if you look at that, the EA says there are more in this, and this says in this there's an ASCII, ASCII, binary, and an icon in the association. We can select each of them, and you see what it says is this is a meta file with the extension met. This is the binary information, which is practically nothing, and it does contain the icon. This 
ASOC table is generally available on most files which are executable because they have associations with them. So it tells the system what is associated with this file. Um, let's have a look. Uh, I'm trying to find... Uh, Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of a file which has multiple uh, MVMTs, but we'll come to that. Okay. So basically, you can copy and delete, because you can throw away the EA if you wish. Some are important, some are not. Um, you can also create an EA if you wish. When you create an EA, you need to supply various information. So, for example, an EA name. In this case, I made one earlier with a dummy name MMM. And I can say, what type is it? Is it an ASCII, binary, or what have you? Let's keep it simple, and we say ASCII. Then what you then see is in the ID, this is the correct ID for that particular thing. Now. What do we want to do? Um, oh, uh, sorry, that was hex. I can enter in hex or ASCII now. I will do it in ASCII, but if I wish, I can switch to hex or even binary and enter the information in binary. Some EAs, you have to do them in binary because uh, that's the way they are comprised, it is up to you the input method you wish. I can have it automatically size the EA. Here he said there are five bytes, so it automatically does it. Or I can switch that off and limit the EA. For example, if an EA has a specific size and I'm entering it, I want it to stop, so I know I've made a mistake, I've put in too much. I can indicate it's critical or not, and I can then save it or discard it. I will try and save it. <laughs> Always fun. Uh, why? I think it's because he didn't take the name over. Okay, it has to have a name. Yes? Uh, the, the type is effectively the type ID. You can do it in two ways. You have, as you see here, these types. And one of them is the so-called user type. If I select icon, you see that it changes here, but I cannot change it directly. I can go to that field and change it to something I want. And that is generally, if you say user, oops, Cancel. If I say user, then I get a user type. User types in EAs are, I think, up to 7FFF. And I know that because if I try to. I, oh, yeah. Now I'm showing you how I can override it. You have an option in the options to override uh, user EAs. Can't find it now. Oh, options, of course. User type override. So I, if I have the user type override, I can make anything I want. Uh, you just have to be more careful. There are specific types, which if I put that off and I go now and say... Uh, create EA. I have to give a name. And if I go to... Ah, too quick. I want to go to user. And I try now. It limits it to the standard user range. Um, in the... 
so-called assigned EAs from the rates 8,000 up to FFFF, there are about 9 or 10 used. Okay, we go out of this. So here, did I, I discard, okay. It's easier to, for example, make the ASCII. Create. Here you have uh, the SEA standard extended attributes. If I click that, then I get the standard attribute names. Yeah. But I will switch that off. I just have ASCII and I use the name MMM. Uh, we type. Is this the critical? Ah, an EA can be either critical or non critical. If I check that, then the EA is marked as critical. In principle, if an EA is marked as critical, it has to be there. I've yet to find a critical EA. <laughs> Doesn't say they don't exist. So here we said, uh, um, if I make a mistake, and when I'm typing hex, for example, uh, let's try, G is not allowed. So it cross-checks your input. When you've done that, it cross-checks. Do you really want to save it? I say save. And now with a bit of luck, you see I've now created this EA MMMMM and it has this information. You say, what's this in front of it? Oh, that's because I'm using the raw mode, and that gives on the type of EA. Yes? So, is there a, uh, I'm going to say a batch interface for the strictly GUI? <sighs> Basically, it's strictly GUI because <coughs> I found it very difficult to think of some things you would want to do. And I, I can imagine you want to say clear all EAs, but that's, you know, so it's not. But if people require it, I'm more than willing to add it to the program. I, I, can, see a, I can think of a few scenarios okay. where it might be helpful. Okay. And where you could uh, <coughs> Yeah. Okay, I will show you we do have a search option just for looking for things in a sort of batch mode. You can say what type of EAs you will want to find. I can say the name of the EA if I want, but I just selected icon because that's it. And I have to say where I want to search now. And then I can look, in this case, for all EAs of the type icon. It doesn't matter what the content is. And I can look, and it goes and searches through the system and you see it's still searching. It's found 533 EAs with an icon in it. And then the, if you want, you can then look at that particular EA. You can show the details of that EA. And here you have this extra information. Uh, we can have a look at the next one, and so on and so forth. It's almost batch but not really what you're talking about I suppose um, if I found it I can export it I can export all of the uh, items I've found I can delete them I can delete all of them if I want by the normal selection 
which I won't do, because <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm doing at the moment. Can you not throw your workplace shell at the YouTube and collect one? You can screw the system up beautifully if you, uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they are uh, screwed up. No, I told you this back in 2015, guys. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, EAs are stored in JFS, HPFS, as part of the file system. In uh, FAT, they are stored in a separate file. Uh, EA underscore SF, no, data.fs, yeah. That's where they are stored. Remember, remember, years ago when you had OS2 running on FAT and you had this catastrophic crash and there was a reboot and checked it, and I set up a sleep time and set up have EA data and therefore lunch checklist, and then the whole vessel would call up and you had a broken desktop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, EAs do exist in other file systems. Um, Linux is one of them. Even uh, Windows does have EAs. Problem is they're different. So what's new? Um, and of course, cross compatibility is a problem. Um, I have a, a NAS at home, and I do backups of my files to that NAS. But unfortunately, my NAS will not take the EAs, which can sometimes give me a problem for particular files. But I have a solution for that, and we'll talk about that later this afternoon. <laughs> okay, where were we? So, here you see we can create, copy, cut, delete, all EAs, edit the EA. That's handy, edit an EA. I have to select it and say edit it, and I can edit it in two modes. A mode I can read, or raw mode. Here we've taken the EA we have just, just created, and you see on the left, I, let's try, I just change one letter and save it. And now you see that EA has been changed. With a bit of luck, undo, and it's back to what it was. I have a, a multiple uh, undo, you saw undo one, undo all, or a certain number, and then you step back through. What else do we have with this? Um, an e rename an EA sometimes can be handy. You can strip EAs from a file. This is the same as you use in the EA util. The format is also the same. So if I strip it and put it into a file, it takes, the, it does um, the same file name, but it, it gives an extra extension, EAH, where the stripped EAs will be put. You can use this in EAUtil to put them back to a file, or you can use this program to join the EAs back again. Uh, save names, what was that? Oh, yes. If I've selected a particular item, I think it's sometimes handy to save the path name, the file name, and the EA name. And I'm wondering if I, yes, I have here a uh, clip view, which you probably know. And if I say, okay, with a bit of luck, I should, ah, yeah, listing, uh, this doesn't seem to be working as I thought it might. But anyway, basically, as I say, okay, I should get the path name all the, and the file name and the EA name. You can just save them to the clipboard. Not sure what's happening here, but okay. What else? Um, 
Ah, ah, ah. Oh, yeah, cancel. Um, so you have a lot of options. You can copy a clip, format it, unformat it. You can look in subdirectories or not. You can start in a certain way. You can allow users to override various things like the standard EAs. Uh, you can override MLE auto repositioning because I use MLEs in this. Uh, and there are some other things. I'm so okay, sound. Um, one of the problems I ran up against uh, between my laptop on my PC was the PC has a buzzer. The laptop doesn't. And sometimes you want to be warned that something's happened. So what I did is I added in this program the option to use the buzzer or the multimedia sound. And in this case, you can test it. I say, now sounds. I have to sound very low now. That's always the way, isn't it? I will put it up a little bit. And then, in any error, it will use those sounds. Okay. What I would like to show you is what is very complex and that is if I create an EA that is of the type MVMT. This is the multi-volume type. Now I can say how many <coughs> EAs are in that EA I can define <coughs> that that is an ANSI, this is a binary, this is a bitmap, and this one is another MVMT. Because here you get a cascading of EAs. This for me was the most difficult thing to implement because it is, you can have up to 16 sub-EAs. You can, let's uh, go back. I can change this also to uh, another multiple EA. And just with one. and save the level. Here I can have the MVST is a multiple value but having the same types in it. So in this case, I've said I've got ASCII here. If I did, it sets all of them to ASCII. So you can see it is quite complex to do multiple EAs, but this program does handle it. Okay, what else have I got for you guys? Mm -hmm. I think basically I've covered most of it, the search we did. Oh yeah, help. There is an extensive help if he finds it. I'm now wondering if I've put it in. <laughs> Help. Uh, no, I think I forgot to copy that across into the virtual box, sorry. Um, but what I found when I was going through and making this program, there are a lot of inconsistencies in the help file for extended attributes. So all those I have corrected and added in the help of this program. 
Okay, that was basically it, unless you have some questions. Yes? No, they're, they're completely different. Uh, they, they will, you, if you copy an EA from OS2 to a Linux system that does support EAs, it copies them and you get them back. But their own EAs, which that system uses, are different. Yeah? Yeah. Yes, but I have a solution for that and I'll talk about this this afternoon. <laughs> yes? But the size of an EA per file is limited to 4 kilobytes, right? The number, the total size is 64K. You can have one of 64K or you can have 64K from one, <laughs> which is useless because you can't even define what for an EA it is. It has to be a small one, like an icon, because icons are in EAs. Yeah. In the multimedia stuff, there's information about uh, bitrate or, or what have you. So you get those sort of EAs. Light tables, I think, are also... Well... Um. All types of EAs start. Oh, I said apps, sorry. <laughs> I started with apps. I need to go back to the root and start. You see, um, there are a lot of Rex EAs, the literal pool, the variable buffer, that's also in EAs. Sorry? Yes, yes. Yes. So you see, you, you see here the, the files. Here you see the EAs. So a lot of recs. But you see also font information, version information. So there's a lot of stuff in there. What it always does, you don't know. But as I say, um, one of the problems you have is with long names that can be duplicated in a directory. Questions? Yes? Does have EAs. Yeah, but that's yeah, but that's not as an EA. Yeah, that's that's in the yeah. Yeah, you can e you can imagine you could use EAs to give extra information regarding to the user. What users may use it? You can give names. I, I use in, in uh, some of my programs an EA called MD5 checksum, which is basically a checksum of that file, which means I can very easily check that the validity of that file. So you can do what you want. Uh, EAs can be very nice. <coughs> They're just not easy to use. This program makes it relatively easy. So who wants to buy? Good. Any other questions? Uh, yes? Uh, yes? Uh, 
Ja. Let me sit down, sorry. <laughs> um, FAT32, and then Greg knows this, you have the option to enable EAs or not, right, Greg? Uh, I know they weren't originally, yeah? Previously you had the option, didn't you? I thought. But, okay, FAT32 does support EAs. Uh, this system works with FAT32 because the, the interface from the, the API is basically the same. Uh, it is up to the file system where he puts them. As we know, in uh, uh, FAT file system, he puts that in the special file. To me, it makes no difference. I ask, get the EA. Yes. So one of the things you can do with this program is to read those and store them somewhere else. But you can do that also with EAUtil. This is a little bit easier and it does let you see what's happening and what's there. Next, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, well, what it, 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 this is a question which I can't say it will work or it won't work. All I can say is sometimes I've been copying. Um, from Windows, for example, I've uh, downloaded an, uh, something and I put an EA in there for the long name because if it goes to uh, a, a, a FAT32 petition, if that also has short names, doesn't it? FAT32? No. Well, yeah. Uh, so I can put in the full name in the EA, so when I put it to a JFS petition, it has then the full name. Because what happens when you uh, look at a file, if it's JFS and you look, for example, if we oh, <laughs> sorry, that's uh, <laughs> that's Windows, my mistake. <laughs> that's the problem with the. Uh, <laughs> We've all done this at some time. Uh, oh no, I didn't want to do that, of course. No, what I wanted to do was to uh, you see, I haven't got much on this disk, but okay, if I um, let's have a look. What do I want to see in the user? Or we can okay there's a typical uh, folder and if I go into detail view what you see here is the title and the real name I'll make this a little bit bigger here the title and the real name Unfortunately, I can't show you a FAT32 in this uh, system at the moment, but maybe we can look at it later directly when I'm using uh, Arca. Um, and these, in principle, should always be the same, except if you do this on a FAT file system, then you have the typical 8.3 name, and the the, that's the real name. This is, in fact, the long name. So if you have a long name which is bigger, then these two are different. And when you look 
depending how you look at the file, that depends on the program you're using. Uh, a lot of GUI programs will use a long file name. And uh, there, of course not, they use a short file name. So it depends how you're looking at it. I, I've run into problems where I thought I was deleting a file, but it was a different file because the long file name was the same and I, I couldn't understand what was happening. So be careful with when you're doing stuff. Yes. That, that's the long name. Sorry? It, uh, extended attributes are just. It, it is a, it's a bit of history, basically. I mean, now with JFS, you can type in a quite a long name, right? No, but it does work. As, yeah, uh, we. C uh, Uh, for example, here, um, here we have the computer, yeah? I can change that name, eh? Simply, and I say, I've got a character return in there. Because it's, to me, that looks better than one long line. That is in the long name attribute, extended attribute. Um, let's, we will try. And here you see computer exclamation, exclamation, ABC. That is the name it has under JFS. Though when I print it out on the desktop, you see the carriage return. Yeah? So there's more in heaven and earth, Horatio, yeah? But anyway, extended attributes are great fun, I think. Uh, as I said, not all the documentation is correct. That's one of the things I tried to correct in the documentation with this program. I tried uh, to, in fact, update the, um, the documentation over EAs. Problem was the way that is done in the IPF file is, is difficult and I couldn't edit it. So I couldn't add to it easily. So I put it in all that information in this program and the help, which you now can't see. Yeah? Gentlemen, ladies, curly-haired people. <laughs> it got a reaction. That was it. I hope you, I helped you. And as I say,